Hey, what's up, you guys? It's been a while since we've done a Just Read, Let Him Lead, so we're going to pick back up right now with Matthew chapter 3. I'm very excited about it. Um, we read up chapter 1 and 2. We kind of combined those together, but we're going to pick up at just verse 3, or excuse me, chapter 3, and stick with that, and let's go chapter by chapter, I think. I think that's the plan I'm going to do going forward. Um, two things. One, if you hear a dog barking, there's a dog sitting right behind this chair. He's chewing on a, or she is chewing on a bone right now. So ignore that if that's distracting for you. Um, but we're just going to pick back up Matthew chapter three. We've already prayed, so we're going to dive right in. Again, just read, let him lead. The purpose of this series is to show that when we make an environment for the Holy Spirit to speak to us, he will speak to us. We will get understanding from reading his word. I mean, it's just natural. You know, God is not a God of confusion. He's not a God that withholds information uh, from us. He wants to reveal his spirit. He wants to reveal his word. He wants to reveal everything that he is to you specifically. And I want everyone to see that in real life. You know, when I came to the Lord, the biggest thing for me is I, I didn't want to go through anyone. I wanted to experience him myself. He said that if I asked, it would be given to me. If I seek, I will find. If I knock, the door will be opened. And I held him accountable to what he said he is in his word. And here I am now just obsessed with this guy. <laughs> so I hope and pray that this same posture of just discipline to, to seek the Lord can be something that you can adopt. And man, that was a loud crack, huh? <laughs> that you can adopt and, um, and just see in, you know, for your own life, for your own life. So I'm praying that I get some revelation through this chapter right here. I didn't read ahead. I don't have anything planned. We're just going to read and let the Holy Spirit lead. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started at verse one. My nose is itchy. <laughs> In those days, you know what? Let me actually, yeah, I'll read like this. In those days, John the Baptist came into the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. For he is the one, or excuse me, for he is the one about whom Isaiah the prophet had spoken about. So we know right off the jump that this is a prophetic, um, a, a prophecy coming to pass where there will be one crying out in the wilderness. That's what Isaiah said. And he was referring to John the Baptist. What's crazy too, when we read ahead, we'll, we'll see. But Jesus said that there literally has been no greater prophet than John the Baptist. I, I'm pretty sure he said prophet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said there's no greater prophet than John the Baptist. That's crazy. That's crazy. We're going to see that when we read ahead. Um, I'm pretty sure, um, probably in the next few chapters. But um, that's a bold claim. I mean, there was Moses, right? There was Elijah, you know, all these great prophets. But I think sometimes, at least with myself, we tend to forget about how polarizing John the Baptist was. And again, he was prophesied to make the path straight, to really get people ready for the coming of the Lord. I do think that um, this is just me. It's not Bible or anything, but I think there's going to be something somewhat similar to that maybe at Jesus' second coming. I, I don't know how that's going to be. Um, I believe it might be the two witnesses. I believe it might be maybe the 144,000 um, Jewish people that would be preaching the gospel. Um, so many different ways I, I take it, but... Um, I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool to witness regardless. Um, but yeah, you can see that reference in the book of Isaiah. Um, and it's right here. The voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Now, John wore clothing made of camel's hair with leather. Uh, man, I can't read. Now, John wore clothing made from camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And his diet consisted of locusts and wild honey. So from the jump, when we read that, we see that he's not a, a normal guy. When I... When I'm reminded of his clothing, I'm reminded of, again, the two witnesses. They're going to be clothed in sackcloth. I don't know if that's like spiritually sackcloth or like literal sackcloth. I think it's probably literal. Um, but uh, regardless, I, I think of that when I, when I read this. Then people, verse 5, from Jerusalem, as well as all Judea and all the region around, jo around the Jordan, were going out to him. And he was baptizing them in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. When I read this, I'm like... So we see baptism was a thing before Jesus, and we know that you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some people baptize in the name of Jesus. I think it's the same. Some people kind of use that as like, oh, you didn't do it right. Me me personally, I, I God knows what you're talking about and what you mean. So either way, I, I think it's fine. Um, I do think, I mean, you know what, I'm going to say that for later. <laughs> um I do, th I do think it's interesting how we see those two things, though. Like in the book of Acts, it's, it's baptized in the name of Jesus. 
But Jesus says to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So is the name that's given for them the name of Jesus? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, a couple things that stick out. The first is there was baptism before before Jesus. Isn't that interesting? And I don't I don't know if I if I recall that ever happening outside of John doing that. I don't see it in the Old Testament. People getting baptized. I mean, I'm, there was a there was that one. Um, I forget if he was like a, a general. He was like an assistant to the king, and he went to go get healed, and he had to go dump it, dunk in the in the river. I think it was the Jordan River in the Old Testament. I'm butchering this story, um, but he he had to go dunk in the river three times to be cleaned of his, I believe it was leprosy. Oh my goodness. It's just off the top. I know you, you know the story. Um, but that's the only reference I can kind of think of as far as being dunked somewhere and then being cleansed. You know, we see here that John says to, you know, be baptized and they confess their sins. So it's like you're being cleansed. You know, the Bible says that we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to purify us of our sins cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we just got to confess our sins. It's an amazing thing. Verse seven, but when he saw many Pharisees, talking about John the Baptist and Sadducees, these were the religious leaders. Um, you can actually see here in the footnote, the Pharisees were members of one of the most important and influential religious and political parties of Judaism in the time of Jesus. So they were very, very influential. The Sadducees controlled the official political structures of Judaism at this time, being the majority members of the Sanhedrin. Coming, so John, uh, John saw many of them coming to his baptism and said to them, you offspring of vipers. This is what John is saying. You brood of vipers who warned you, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. That's crazy. Can you imagine <laughs> someone saying to the religious leaders who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore, produce fruit that proves your repentance. Produce fruit that proves your repentance. And don't think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that God can raise up children from Abraham from these stones. When I read that, I'm reminded of, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like talking ahead. We're going to come to it. But, man, I forget where it is, but... You know, when Jesus was coming into, you know, as king, right? People were calling out Hosanna in the highest. And I don't know if it's from that scripture somewhere, but it talks about how, like, you know, praise the Lord. And um, I forget if it was there, but it's something like if you don't cry out to, to praise the Lord, it, it, God is, I mean, it's okay. God can make these stones cry out to him to praise his name. So uh, that's what I'm reminded of when I read that. It's amazing. But people try to rely, or these Pharisees, it seems from what I'm reading, is they relied on, you know, being God's, you know, chosen people or being, you know, from the line of Abraham. And they're using that as their, I guess, shield to to be righteous. God's like, or John's like, look, God can raise up children from Abraham from these stones. Like you're no special. We all need to repent. You need to you need to really confess your sins just like everyone else. Who can, you know, protect you from this coming wrath? He's a really bold guy, John the Baptist. <laughs> Even now, the axe is laid at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. These are all things that it sounds like what Jesus was saying, as you can see later on when we continue to read. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one coming after me is more powerful than I am. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. How did God, how did John the Baptist know that? I read, um, I forget, maybe it's in the book of Luke, so I don't want to spoil it. But I was listening to this one, man, this guy, um, I forget his name, but he's one of the, he's one of the subscribers I, I follow on Insta, on uh, YouTube. He was talking about how, um, I'm not really, wait, what was I going to say? Yo, I forgot what I was about to say. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me to say it. I'm about to do a water for repentance, but one can't more probably not worthy to carry his sandals. He will, oh, I remember. I say? Yeah. Okay, it's fine. He was saying how pretty much, 
I'm probably going to butcher it, so maybe I shouldn't say it. But he talked about, because you know the story of when John the Baptist leaped in his mom's stomach when Mary came and, you know, they were kind of close together. So he saw the anointing. And the thing is, so he was talking about how um, in this video, you know how people are saying or finding out that when you're born, there's a there's a light that gives off, you know, right at conception. You see a light. And people are saying it's like some kind of enzyme or something, but it's like, well, probably, but it's also the glory of God. It's, you know, it's light. In the beginning, there was light. And it's amazing to see that light flash. So the guy in this video, he was talking about, I wonder what light came, you know, a flash inside of Mary, you know, when Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we bear witness to this light. So who was the first person to really bear witness to this light? It was John the Baptist because he, you know, leaped for joy. And that was his response when he bore witness to this light. So that was kind of an interesting um, way to think about it. This guy, he thinks so, like, I want to think like this guy. So I'm, uh, I need to remember the, the guy's channel. And maybe I'll ping it if I remember to do so. Um, he's kind of like... I don't know. I think you got to be really like, I don't know, not a baby Christian, I think, because some things are like, I don't know. I'll probably say differently at times. <laughs> but uh, regardless, you know, as John says that I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He's God in the flesh. He's God in the flesh. I'm, re I'm reminded of that song. Um, we all know that gratitude song, right? He says, man, I got nothing I just got a hallelujah. That's all I got. You know, what else What else can I give that's fit for a king? Hallelujah. And even hallelujah, that's like pointing to him. Still, even in that, all I got is my praise and my gratitude and my thanks. I love that song. I remember when I first heard that song, I was going to, it was like in 2020. And I was going to this like, it wasn't a Pentecostal church, but it was like a very Holy Spirit like led church. Like there was a, they had prophets there. They had people praying in tongues. They had, they had this one time where someone was praying in tongues. Everyone was silent and they actually had someone interpret what this person was saying. It was amazing. It was crazy. And you know, me at the time, I never experienced that. I know we see that in the Bible, of course, hundred percent. Praying in tongues, having someone interpret is required if you're going to do so in the assembly of many people. But the thing is, I, I ain't gonna lie. I kind of was like, how do, how do I know that that's what that person heard that person say or is interpreting? You know, how, how you know what I mean? So I was kind of like, you know, I, you know, me and my critical thinking or my critical mind, my lack of faith. But I, you got to like choose it, be like, no, okay, that, that sounds biblical. Because what they were saying wasn't anything against the word of God. It made sense. It sounds like what God would say based on the, the word. Um, but I, I think there's going to be a, a big outpouring of that as we inch closer to the end times. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm always wondering at times what like gifting I'll be probably operating in at the end times, you know? You ever think about what gifting you'll be operating in? Like, will you offering a gift of healing? That's gonna be so required, you guys. We're not gonna be able to buy or sell. Of course, if you don't believe we're gonna be in a tribulation, I guess it, I mean, we, we won't gotta worry about that. I think we will be in a tribulation though. So that's why I think we got to worry about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to need people to interpret the word. We're going to need teachers. We're going to need evangelists. We're going to need a lot of things. We're really going to need we're really going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to need God, you know? And I think that's a good posture to be in because when we're so in need of him, that's where we give room for him to move and for him to move in miraculous ways that we've never seen. You guys, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a big move of the Holy Spirit. And I really believe we're going to be preserved and protected through it all. You know, we might, you know, have some issues and trials. People will lose their life. We know that. But just like how he preserves the Israelites, you know, as the plagues were happening in Egypt, they were there. They saw the judgments. Um, they were they were protected. I think we'll, we'll probably be in the same situation. I think. I'm not sure. Um, but that's another video. <laughs> Um, another thing, when I read the scripture, I was reminded, I heard somewhere like in, in Islam, they were talking about, oh, you know, John the Baptist, he wasn't referring to Jesus. He was talking about when someone after me, they were saying that Jesus said this. And then they were saying that what Jesus was saying was talking about Muhammad, like, go listen to him. 
I don't, I don't agree with that. They're also talking about um, in another place where Moses, he was talking about, you know, God's going to make a prophet like Moses. And we know he's talking about Jesus because Jesus was a prophet, but he was more than just a prophet, but he was a prophet. He was a teacher. You know, he was an evangelist. He was God. He was, he was, he was a servant. You know, he was all these different roles. Um, he was a human. Um, they were saying like, oh, they're talking about Muhammad. And it's like, man, I don't think so. I don't think so. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I don't think Muhammad could do that. Only Jesus can do that. His winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will, actually, I know he can't do that. I didn't say I don't think, like I'm not sure. I was just saying that as a way of talking. <laughs> his winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will clean out his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the storehouses. That is a parable somewhere. Man. And wheat, you know, you can determine who's wheat and chaff. Chaff is like in the Old Testament too. It talks about that. Man. It's so crazy how the Bible literally just, it uses the same words, you know? That's it. Wow. Wheat into the storehouses. So when you're wheat, you're you're a child of God. You're You're saved into the barn. Oh, but the... I didn't see this. Yeah, okay, chaff. But the chaff he will burn up in extinguishable fire. I'm I'm reading um where did I read chaff from? I think it was in Judges somewhere, I think, because I'm reading Judges right now, so I don't know. Anyway, verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John to be baptized by him in the Jordan River. Look at that. He came to be baptized, and this is when Jesus is God, right? He's the, he's the image of the invisible God. The fullness of God dwelt in bodily form. And he emptied himself, right, of being God. That's what the scripture says. He emptied himself of his divine privileges. He he took off his divinity, but he's still the same person. But the attributes, well, I don't know about attributes is the word, but he just took off that divinity to the point that he became a man and to the point that he'll be baptized as man should be. So he's he's so amazing and God is so like loving to show not only his grace and love to the world and, and paying for our sins, but also showing how we should walk. And if Jesus got baptized, we should be baptized. If he was publicly declaring his faith, we should publicly declare our faith. Now I don't think, you know, baptism is a requirement to be saved because, you know, some people maybe you know get saved on their deathbed or some people get saved like those two or well, one of the criminals that was hooked on the cross, um, I believe he was saved. Um, Abraham was saved, right? Um, that ruler or that general I was telling you about that dumped in the Jordan River, you know, he was saved. He ended up having to go and, you know, he, you know, he was, I did a, I was watching a video from Mike Winger. He was talking about how um, that same story, he, he had to go back and serve his you know, king or, or whoever was the general or whatever. And he's like, hey, I'm going to help him bow down to these idols, but it's not me bowing down because I confess to the God of, of the Israelites. Like, I I believe you guys because I got healed, right? And I think that's, you guys, we got to look at the, the, like, I was blind and now I see. Like, we got to see, like, God shows us, he shows us him. Like, he does through these miracles. We got to believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Um... Yeah, he didn't get baptized unless I guess that that example of dipping in the river. I, that wasn't baptism, no. He was just dipping in the river. But uh, but yeah, people can be saved without being baptized is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> um, so Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized in the Jordan River specifically. In the river is not in the Greek text. I'm very interested in finding like the meaning of Jordan River because. That same guy I was telling you about that I watched on YouTube, he was talking about how, um, you know, Jesus had the anointing and how everyone's looking for the anointing, right? I got to I gotta break it down better in a different way because I tend to forget a lot of stuff. I just remember certain things, but to get the, to be able to tell you guys what it was, I got to watch it again because it's just so much information. But uh, Gethsemane, um, where Jesus went to go and he was very stressed out, right? And he was... Uh, you know, to the point of dying. He, uh, I think about talks about he sweat. I don't know if he sweated blood at that point or, yeah, I think it was at that point. He was sweating blood. So freaking out. Um, but he had that oil, that anointing. 
and the, and God talks about oil and just like anointing, and he he talks a lot about like being put through a wine press, and um, that's how when you get crushed, that's when anointing comes out. Um, this gentleman did a great example of just like how the you know the the women with the oil, um, <laughs> the the oil um, the lamps. He I don't I forgot how he connected the two, but but either way. Um, Gethsemane means oil press. So when Jesus was preparing, like that's when he was starting to be pressed and really, you know, so God can eventually crush him and, and pour out his, his holiness, you know, his anointing and to have that tangible oil to give throughout the world. Like it's, it was an amazing depiction how this man, um, laid it out. I think I want to I want to like do like a reaction where we're watching his teachings because it's like amazing. That's the stuff that I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know. Um, and I seen one of his videos before, and I didn't know who he was. I might have seen like something about it, but Julian actually put me on. So Julian, if you're watching this, I appreciate you, man. That kid is like 18 years old. He's a young kid, and he's he's on he, he he's he gonna be a beast. He is a beast. He is a beast. Um. Anyway, let's get back to this reading. Um, oops, my bad. Uh, Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized in the Jordan River, but John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me? So Jesus replied to him, let it happen now, for it is right for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John yielded to him. After Jesus was baptized, just as he was coming up out of the water, the heavens opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Keep in mind, it says descending like a dove. It wasn't a actual dove. It was like a dove. Comparison, the Spirit is not a dove, but descended like one in some sort of bodily representation. We're going to come back to that. Descending like a dove and coming on to him, coming on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my one dear son. In him I take great delight. So when we think of doves um, descending, I know we tend to think of, um, you know, I'm gonna probably Google it. We tend to think of um, like them being like really slow and like gentle and all that stuff, right? But I'm gonna look this up because I didn't actually verify it. But my pastor said when he was, when his wife was going through COVID, he, um, He's a dove came, never happened before, but came and sat at his window every single day. And that's the same place that he would pray for his wife um, and also for the world and all that. But as he prayed, then the dove started coming every single time at the same place, at the same time when he's praying. And he felt like that was like the Holy Spirit just kind of showing like, hey, I'm here kind of thing, right? But he said, every time this dove came, it wasn't like majestic and and calm and all that it was sounded like a rushing wind so when we think of like the the holy spirit descending like it, it was probably like a rushing wind you know um i want to google that and see um let me see if there's a actual video of that and then we're gonna end there you guys i'm gonna try to you know just keep one chapter of, at a time Doves landing? Oh wait, what is this? Man, I'm looking up. I'm trying to Google this, and it's talking about health services. Um, okay, 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 okay. I'm literally pulling this up right now, you guys. I just wanna. I'm hoping this will be a. Okay, I don't want morning sounds. I want to see a video. I like don't even know what to even Google, you guys. Like to even see. It's just I'm seeing them. Okay. Okay, maybe this will be it. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, is this going to... I don't know if this dove's gonna land like the way I said it was. 
Okay. You see that? You saw that dove landed on that camera? It wasn't all soft and majestic. And you heard his wings flapping? Sound like a rushing wind. No, this dove's got his butt all in the camera. Let's watch it again. Hold on. Mm. That sounds like some kind of authority, right? I don't know. It just made me think. I was like, shout out. Uh, shout out to Pastor. <laughs> but uh, but that's it, you guys. Matthew chapter 3. So we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, the voice coming from heaven. This is my beloved son and who I am well pleased. It's amazing. So we know that this is the buildup. Jesus has now been... He, he's doing everything that, you hear that dog shaking now? Ruby. That's fine. Um, Jesus is doing everything and kind of like following in the steps that we should follow in, right? Let's be baptized. Let's receive the power of the Holy Spirit, right? As he says like to his disciples, the whole, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you'll be my, my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and all the ends of the earth. Real quick, another thing. What do you guys think about when you hear the word witnesses? I should literally still have this tab up from when I looked it up before. When you hear when Jesus says, was it Acts 1-8, I think? Um, You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and all the ends of the earth. You see that dog? Jerusalem, Judea, to the ends of the earth. Dog got fleas or something. What do, you, what do you think of when you hear the word witnesses? You think of, uh, probably, you think of, oh, you know, I bear witness, you know, like, oh, I was there. Or, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can attest to that, you know? I'm going a, I'm to a hold truth to that testimony. Like, oh, yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll, I'll vouch for that. Something like that, right? But uh, what if I told you that the Greek for witness is, uh, is kind of something crazy? Let's go to let's go to Acts one eight. Hold on, let me pull it up with you so you guys don't think I'm pretending. Acts one eight. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If we open up Acts one eight, we go down to the word um, you shall be my witnesses. We see it's Greek. Open up that Greek word. What is that? Martus. Strong's G, 3144. Martus. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like martyrs, don't it? Doesn't that sound like martyrs? Witness. Right? Let's keep this. Hold on. Let's see where else is talked about. Establish testimony two or three witnesses. Um, it kind of sounds like martyrs. Hold on. Strong, a foreign, okay. One who is mindful, he's probably alive with. Okay, a witness, whenever it's seen, heard, knows, legal sense. For example, by a strange gentleman of the Pharisees and Jesus Christ undergoing a violent death. Which I thought I'm looking for something else that I saw, but. That's, I guess that's fine. So there's many different meanings of being a witness. A witness, it can be a legal sense, historical sense, an ethical sense. Those who after his example, after Jesus' example, have proved the strength and genuineness of their faith in Christ by undergoing a violent death. What? So if we want to be witnesses and disciples of Jesus, we got to be willing to love him even unto death. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like doomy and, you know, but I'm just saying we really, we got this like false sense of, at least I believe, because it's, it's, it's me too. Like we got this false sense of like, oh, it feels good, you know, and, and he's supposed to make me happy and. And I'm going to, you know, be taken care of and nothing wrong is going to happen. And I think it's just not the reality from what we see 
from a majority of people that follow Jesus. I mean, people are getting martyred right now, you know, overseas. Um, like all these different countries. And it's like, thank God that, you know, myself and, you know, other people are living in a place that that's not necessarily the case. But at the same time, I think it it makes us a little more desensitized to, like, the reality of what could happen. And I think the reality of what will happen in the tribulation, a lot of people I think are going to fall away because they don't, they don't have that type of like loving God till like whatever it costs. You know, we say that, um, you know, in our songs, like I want to do another series, you guys, I was thinking about this, of just like listening through some of these worship songs. Because some of these songs are saying some like, I'm willing to die for you stuff. And I'm like, we sing it, but do we mean it? So I want to do that. I don't know if you guys would be interested in that. Because I love worship music. I love worship music. I think I like worship more than praise too, by the way. It's not about worship. Um, that's just me. But uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just fear that there's going to be a great divide. Like... I'm not willing to do that. I'm gonna take the market of beast just because I am not trying to. I got babies, you know. I got I got a wife. I got you know my own life. You know we can't love our lives. We've died. When you get baptized, that symbolizes your death, burial, and resurrection. Like I'm dead, both within myself. But I think it's also like literally too. Like my life is I'm. It's not my life no more. He lives in me, and I got to get better at allowing him to live in me personally. Like I am selfish. I live for myself still you know, at times. And it's like, I'm, I'm maturing as I grow and I'm trying to make a habit of allowing him to have literally every moment of my life. I mean, you want to, you want to live, you know, he wants you to live life. You know, I, I do believe that, um, in your own way, but I want to like rid myself of any, of everything, you know, and it's constantly pruning, you know, constantly pruning. You grow and you get pruned, you grow and you get pruned and pruning isn't always the most comfortable thing. Um, but it's the most loving thing. It's one of the most loving things, I believe. I want God to prune me because if he prunes me, I become more like him. Um, you never really arrive, you know, (laughs) you don't really arrive until you resurrect on the last day and, and receive glory, receive your crown, you know, might be a martus crown, martyr's crown. That's a crown, crown of salvation. You know what I mean? Don't forget all the crowns. Man, I don't know. But yeah, interesting, right? But that's it. Um, this might be kind of a short one. Interesting. Let me know what you guys think about this Martus thing. That was kind of crazy. I did not even uh, know that. And again, maybe people will be like, oh, well, they were just talking about the apostles. You know, maybe they needed to be this, this Martus. Yeah, could be the case. Um, so that could be the case. You know, that really, that could be the case. But there were other Martuses out there. <laughs> Martuses. That, uh, that weren't his apostles. But I do think we have to have that mindset of loving, um, not loving our lives even un, unto death. I say, again, I say I, I, I'm willing to do it, but I don't know. Because look at Peter. He saw, he walked on water himself. He walked on water himself. He was in the inner circle with James and John. He saw, he literally saw Moses and Elijah come down talking with Jesus. And he was about to build an altar for them. And and the voice from heaven was like, no, this is my, you follow him. Don't be following Moses and Elijah. They can equal altars like Jesus is equal to them. I mean, they're cool. Moses and Elijah are cool, but Jesus is much more than that. You know, it's crazy too. I want you guys to think for a second. When we get our resurrected bodies, this is the last thing. When we get our resurrected bodies, you know what I'm saying? The Bible talks about we don't know what we'll be like until we see him. So man has seen angels. You know, man has seen Jesus when he rose from the dead. All the apostles and 500, I'm oh, not 500. I mean, yeah, 500. I don't say 500,000. 500 witnesses as well. They all saw him. And he stayed around for like a month. It was like 40 days. And then he ascended to heaven. They saw his resurrected body. 
And they, the word still says we don't know what we'll be like. So I think the body that we'll have won't, won't even be like his resurrected body that we saw. He's We're going to have a body, I think, it's just me, I don't know. I think it's going to be a body like similar to how when he comes in his glory of the Father. Because it says when we see him come, then we'll know what we'll be like. And that's when he'll raise us up. Our bodies are going to be crazy like that. I think, I'm, 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 I think. I want to pull the scripture to back that up. Um, let me know if you guys want me to pull the scripture to back it up. Because it's going to take, I got to Google it. I got to go on my phone, you know. But it's there, trust me. But look it up, actually. Look it up. Look up Look up anything that says like, oh, we won't know, you know, what will be until he's coming or, or something like that. Um, something like that. So that makes you just think like, okay, well, we've seen angels. You know, we've seen Jesus come down in the form of man. We've seen him come down as in the form of the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. We've seen him resurrect, but we still don't know what we'll be like when we resurrect. We're going to have a body like his. And I'm pretty sure his body is way cooler from a worldly perspective than like any angel, any anything. And he's allowed us to have a body like his. So why? So people are like, oh, you know, when people pass, oh, they got their wings, they got their wings. I don't want to have, have a body like an angel. I want to have a body like Jesus. I'm just saying. Can you imagine? Like literally imagine people with bodies like Jesus, whatever he looks like, in the glory of the Father. That's different than angels, different than anything else. And then we're all bowing down and worshiping him. Like, you know, like there's a lot of glory there. You know, we're, we got the glory of from Jesus, thank God, because we are glory and i mean our righteousness is filthy rags as the bible says in the old testament can you imagine that and we just look up to him and just man it's gonna i can't wait for that worship is gonna be crazy in heaven man it's gonna be cool it's gonna be cool all right i gotta wrap this up um man i love you guys i appreciate you guys listening let me know what you guys think matthew chapter three in the books we're going to go to Matthew chapter 4 next. This is when Jesus gets tempted. I'm excited for that. It's crazy, too, how he gets tempted right after he got baptized. Immediately after. After he received the anointing. So that's another interesting point, too. That's interesting. Isn't it crazy, too, that the devil really was like trying to tempt God in the flesh, man? I want to read it now. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. We're going to pick up at Matthew chapter 4. Um, I'm going to try to do this like soon. I'll probably do this tomorrow or something. I got church. I don't know. Love you guys. Let me let me end it. Ah, man, I get so distracted. I love you guys. I appreciate you listening. Just read. Let the Holy Spirit lead. See what he's telling you through all these scriptures. And just, just spend time with him. I ain't going to lie. I've been thinking today... Uh, I'm like, man, I'm kind of like not spending that much time with the Lord, like in solitude. Like I talk, I mean, I talk to him every day. I'm not even joking. Like every single day, I can't remember the day I haven't talked to him or spent some sort of time with him. And I started trying to take a Sabbath, you know, to just really just rest. But I haven't done that last, today, obviously. I'm doing this. Um, and then I posted that other Kat Von D video. But I, I haven't like, it's been like at least a week where I spent like just quiet for an extended period of time to hear from the Lord. It's been kind of going. So I got to, I've been, I've been made known of that literally today um, in my prayer time. So I'm going to try to, I will make that, uh, go back to that, you know? I, I feel like I got to go back to that first love again sometimes, you know? Because I'm really into like, knowledge and learning things and i get so much like stuff and sometimes you get stuff and it makes you kind of confused sometimes you're like wait a minute okay like what it's just a lot sometimes and i have a lot of like my beliefs and i know a lot of things i believe you guys is not like conventional i think i mean it is hold on it is like the gospel know that but like for example this thing about the whole like jesus's body thing a lot of people believe that, oh, our body's going to be like Jesus when he resurrected. He looks just like a human. He can walk through walls and stuff. I don't think that. 
you know? And it's like, I feel like sometimes you feel like you can't say what you really think at times because people can be like, oh, this dude's a heretic or something. And it's like, man, I'm just going to tell the people that, like, like you know, in my circle, like Nick, you know, or like, you know, my girlfriend, you know, like, that's it, really. That I feel like I can, like, trust to be like, look, this is what I think. Like, what do you think? Oh, man, that's interesting. Or like my boy Terrence, you know? People that, like, know me. So it's like, I don't know, I get, I don't know. But I be thinking a lot. I don't know if that makes sense. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> good night, you guys. Have a good one. I got I to gotta cut this. Have a good night. Talk to the Lord. Spend time with him. And, uh, and just know that you're blessed beyond measure. You are blessed beyond measure. All right. Pray for Israel. Pray for those Palestinian civilians. Oh, my goodness. Pray for this world. Pray for peace in the Middle East. But know as we're praying for that, what that could mean. It's going to be good. But I'm going to tell you right now, whoever makes peace in the Middle East, I'm telling you right now, he's the Antichrist. And especially if he makes it for seven years, some kind of covenant for seven years. Watch out for that. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on this camera. Y'all going to hear me. I'm telling you. I'm like, this is it. All right. Good night, you guys. <laughs>